So hello and welcome to video 17 of this series. In the last episode we had a look at the basic Hello World graphical user interface and today we want to have um, some kind of connection so that we can uh, send some things from the processing to the user interface and, and display that. So the idea is basically every part of the system could theoretically send something to the user interface if it's important or necessary. So um, there are simil similarities to logging. So logging you should principally also be able to do in several places. So uh, the idea is uh, basically maybe um, to have a look at Rio's logging and then do something similar for the graphical user interface. Yeah? Also keep in mind that um, um, why don't we call directly call some, some functions from the user interface? Well, because um, we have the structure now that we have the processing as a library, and then we have the main where also the graphical user interface is hosted. So um, if you would directly call uh, functions of the graphical user interface, this would mean the library would have to depend on main, on the executable, which is not really possible. Or you would have to, to, to put it out into a separate library, the graphical part, and then you would have to depend on this. And this is not good because um, graphical user interface basically depends then on every other thing so you can easily get into the dependency cycles and so on so uh, there needs to be some kind of of mechanism which which allows a, a little bit of of a differentiation between the processing and the user interface and also this it doesn't it, it, it isn't said that uh, we need a, a gtk interface it could be a web-based interface it could be a, a tui a, a terminal user interface based interface it could be something with a middleware it could be some just some socket so that you can remote control the system uh, it could be a lot of different interfaces so we don't want to lock into one specific thing so um, basically the idea would be to send messages to a user interface and the user interface processes these messages and then does something with them and displays the, the, the things so so when when something happens in the in the processing part which should update the user interface, let's call this an event. So um, the idea is that we then have some kind of function which the user interface or the generally what interface ever you use um, provides to the to the processing part and the processing part then can notify the user interface. Yeah? So, um, and that's a quite similar to the to the log function in Rio. So let's have a quick look. So we have to, we already have used this logging um, and basically there is this uh, log func data structure um, which isn't uh, the, the constructors are not exposed so we don't know what's in there and then you have this has log func um, class uh, which then simply provides this one and which is a lens the lens with the tick is is the, the the simplified version which doesn't change types so it's the lens between and, and this environment from the the rio monad so the reader t monad and the log func um, data structure itself and then you have um, these log functions um, so this is setting for example this log debug so let's uh, let's look about what log debug does so it calls Basically, yeah, you have the, the monad IO, the monad reader, and the has log func constraints. And then it calls log generic, and log generic is, is defined here. So what it does, basically, you have this has log func class, which must be available on env, and it calls view log func l, so this applies this lens from this class and gets the, the, the log func data structure. And from this, it gets out a log func and then it calls lift.io and this log func call stack, blah, blah, blah. So let's have a look at um, the log func data structure itself. You see it here. So basically, this is the log function. So it takes a call stack, a log source, a level, and the, the, the builder, so the message, and in IO. Um, and then you have also some options stored with it. So this is uh, then some a park structure. And you can also then, then um, combine this with semi-group. So you can, can combine more log functions together, uh, which we will do later. And uh, yeah, that's it basically. So the question, why, you might wonder why there here is an IO and not an M. Uh, so any monad, the thing is, that if you have an M here, then you would have an, an M as a type parameter. 
and this would then propagate upwards to to also the application state and then you end quickly up with higher kind of data types and then it can get very complicated very uh, very quickly so um for for such things it's it's often better to bite the bullet and just have a concrete io function uh which is sometimes a bit unfortunate but um you can live with it and work around it. So as the GTK user interface um, also works in, in any monad which has a monad IO instance, we can also run it in IO. And um, yeah, um, what we have to take care of is of course, we, we if we run from a different thread and this is uh, the case in our, it's the case in our processing thing. So uh, there has to be some special measures for GTK to go. Okay, so let's do something similar um, let's go back to the to the program and now um, I will add a file events let's call it events and these events are the messages which are sent from the processing to the user interface which the user interface should display something where the user interface then it should notify the display um, what it should do. So uh, let's call this an event. And for now, I would say we have only three messages. One is event that we are connected. Then we have event disconnected. And then we have the event uh, TM packet. And this is then the team packet to be displayed. Huh? So I think that's it for now. Um, the next thing is uh, let's define some kind of class um, uh, or the function. Uh, let's call this race event. And this should be called then from the processing whenever it wants to notify the, the, the user interface for some reason. So we need this monad IOM. Uh, we need a monad reader, env m, and this env should have, yeah, we need to define a class has race event env. And um, this takes an event and calls it in this, in the real monad then. And uh, let's now find and uh, let's add it quickly to the to the cover file. And now, of course, we don't have the at this class. So let's define this class has race event a where and we do the same as as with, with the logging so in in, in rio you, you see this class has log func it's a, it has a log func so just a lens yeah so um let's call this uh, race event lens uh, which is a yeah a, um a simplified lens with in this call case the a or let's call this env and it doesn't return a log func let's say but we define also data type we could simply pass a function but um, uh, if we have a data type then it is a little bit more encapsulated and then we can add some additional properties like in the logging we have seen here in the logging there's also the the logging options set and we, we could do something similar so maybe we want to filter some events that not all events are go to the graphical user interface because um, user interface when a lot of events are coming in then the then the user interface can slow down the processing so maybe then there should be should be something thrown away and there should be setting for that and we could have our own options and setting structure or whatever so let's define define also uh, for now this is a new type race event And this is just a function which takes an event and again uh, is called in I.O. Um, that we don't have this, this thing that we don't have to parameterize upwards. 
Uh, okay. And we could also already define, I have seen this, Rio does this also. So for example, if you look here, then for the log func data structure itself, Rio already defines an instance for this, uh, um, for this class and it's simply the ID function. And we can do something similar. I don't know if we will need it, but uh, instance uh, has race event, uh, race event where, and race event L is ID. Not in scope. Uh, yes, tm packet. So we need to import tm packet. Defined but not used. Yeah, that's okay. And uh, of course, we should also then export something. So let's event export this. We need to create it. Then we need uh, the has race event class. Um, uh, the race event function, of course. Uh, the race event type, but not its constructor. So we will probably need a, a new race event, something like this. Um, and this uh, should take, this should run, this new race event should run in a monad and it should take this function event into IO and just create an, a mona uh, in this monad this uh, race event thing and actually that should be quite simple so we pass it the function and this is then um, pure so we uh, race event and this function right yeah so it creates a data structure and just returns it in this monad and we also need to export that, of course. Let's see. Defined but not used. Yes, okay. Now we can write this function. So what should we do here? Uh, basically, we do the same as, as the, the, the log generic function does here. So we just copy that. It's, a, it's quite, quite easy what is done here. So we get the raise event. Um, also f we don't have second and few and uh, call this lens and the lens is race event l lens in our case and then we call lift io we call this function f with the event so very easy that should be it for the for the event itself okay so now let's um let's call that Right? Um, let's see, we get into the chains. Let's first do what uh, this, this connected, disconnected events. This should be quite easy to do. So let's go to the chain. Uh, oops, chain. And then here we have this run nctrs chain. And as you remember, hopefully, this run general TCP client uh, calls the connection. Uh, as it creates the connection. Oh, sorry. So if we get get into this run conduit res block, which is started by this do here, then we have a connection. So basically, we should then raise event um, event connected. Yeah. So we need to import event, of course. Uh, event. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course we cannot uh, we cannot deduce this, so we have to to enter at this value has raise event env, and um, so here we have uh, the connection. Then in this case, uh, when we when we return from this run general TCP client, we've lost the connection. So in this case, this is an error case with an exception, and this case is a regular termination. But we have in both we have uh, uh, this connection. So in this case, we, we lock this, and then we should also raise event event disconnected, and we should also do this here. Uh, 
and compile it. Okay, and then of course uh, this uh, run ncTRS chain is called by this function, and we don't have the the requirement here, so we also need to have race event env. And you see, if you start this on a, on a very low level function, then this pops up, and you have to add it this this constraint to to all the other functions above. But yeah, that's how it is. Okay. Um, so we have this race event, and the thing we have not done yet is uh, we haven't added it to our app state. So we have this app lock function. So this is our until now we were in the generalized in the monad, yeah. And now we have to do this for this concrete type for this app state type we have used. And we do the same approach as for the for the lock function. Let's add an an app race event, which is a race event structure. And it's not in scope. Right. And um, then we have to define an instance of has race event for app state. And this has the uh, race event L is length. So actually, we have a lens which does app race event on the reading, on the getting part, and on the setting part, we get the state, the app state, and the race event function um, data type in our case, which is then wrapped. Uh, it's a function wrapped in the data type. And then we just update the app race event to this data structure. Okay? And then, of course, we have the big thing. Uh, now, on in the main in the main function, uh, we we have to also provide this, yeah. And um, now we have to make the connection between the graphical user interface and our race event function. So, uh, actually, currently we cannot do this. So um, we have to define this function first. So we ha we are now in main. We have this this GUI main window. So let's add. For the GUI uh, event processor of the JS, and we need, of course, we need to import the event. And so, what we need is um, is a process event function, uh, which takes. What does it take? It takes um, so we need to correlate this with the with the graphical user interface, and currently we only have the main window. And we also see the main window is the main entrance for public functions. Let's you would call it like that in the object oriented program, but the access to the user interface generally, so the the, the the published functions in the main window. So basically, we should also import GUI main window, and then we we should pass it the main window. Uh, then the event, and this is an I/O function, right? So uh, we export this, and we have to add this to the Kerbal file, of course. Uh, so in the executable other modules, GUI event processor. Okay, restart, uh, and. This is, uh, we get the GUI and then we get the events. So we then pattern match on the events. So let's say the event connected. What should we do? Uh, currently, we don't do anything. Let's just do the event connected and the event disconnected. Process event and for the rest, we just do nothing for now. We will add it later. Okay, so. Um, Process event and uh, we have this exported. So now in main we have to import this, of course. Chewy event processor. So um, 
first thing I want to run the chains in the background so that we can test it again. So if we do it like this, then then the loop will stop here and we won't get to the GTK main loop and this won't run. So for now, let's just quickly start this with async and uh, let's ignore the return value for now. And then we still have to apply these fields, but we have this main window and now we make the connection. So. Uh, we have to define a new data type in the events with um, a new race event. We have to pass in this function, right? So we do this new race event. New race event. Uh, and the event function in our case is then the function from the event processor, the process event function. Process event function with the main window we have created just here. And then we get a race event. And this one we just add app race event. Sorry. New race event is not in scope. Uh, did we import events? No, of course. Yes. Uh, import loop. Right. Uh, and now this is not used. Okay, but it compiles. So we have some warnings. Okay. Um, next thing. Uh, we don't have uh, functions in the in the GUI that actually does something. And in fact, if we have a look at the GUI, oh, I haven't started. So if we look at the Glade file, uh, we don't have some kind of connection indicator until now. So um, we should add something. And um, I want to make this uh, an edit field, which is uh, not editable. So it's just this display. You could also use a label or something like that. But I like to have it like that with a, with a edit. Um, and um, the thing is, uh, OK. Ah, yeah, it's OK. The thing is, let's for this let's add a parent. This is the this is the menu bar. Yeah. So for the menu bar, let's add a parent which is a box, and let's make this box vertical, uh, horizontal. Sorry, and this has three fields. One is the menu bar, the second is a label, and the third one is a control and GTK entry. Right. And uh, let's make this label uh, expand so that we have it on the right side. And also this label, let's make it, uh, how is this? Yeah, horizontal end. Yeah. And let's give it some margin and change the text to yeah, connection. And then this entry, let's call this entry connection. Uh, let's enter a text. Uh, the longer one is disconnected, right? Then I want to have this in centered in the middle. And uh, the thing is, this cannot focus, so it cannot reach the focus with, with tabs and so on. And it is um, not sensitive, and it's also not editable, right? Okay. So let's save this. Uh, I hope that's cool. For now, yeah. Let's have a look. And um, so, change back to the code. Um, let's go to the main window, and actually, um, let's add this entry. So, NV connection which is an entry. Uh, let's read this from the file, basically with the same function we had. The con entry is, uh, and the name is uh, entry connection. Copy this name, put it here as a string, and this is an entry. And then in the main window, we also add the MW connection is this con entry. And uh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, so now we have we have uh, a, an object we can access. Then let's write the function um, to actually set the value. So let's call this main window 
set connected. And this takes this main window and a boolean value which says connected or not and runs in a monad IO. Okay. Let's do this. So we have the main window and uh, if it's true, then what we want for now, let's just quickly set the entry. So the, in GTK the function is entry set text. So we want to set the text of the entry MW connection from the GUI, from the past main window. And we want to set the text to uh, connected. And we do the same for false. And we want to say, set this then to disconnected, right? And I want to do something additional. And that's where the fun starts, because I want to also display this in colors. So uh, for especially for mission control things and such things, you want to know immediately if a connection drops for some reason. And you need a visual indication for this. So let's let's make this color uh, colorful a little bit more. And the thing is, the GTK had uh, native functions for setting the colors, but with GTK3 they changed everything to CSS, so cascading style sheets. And so I prepared something for this, um, which we can use also for other things. So basically this is um, a cascading style sheet as a byte string. So we have the overloaded strings enabled, so this will be then encoded into byte string. And uh, the thing is, uh, you have then some properties and um, this uh, for, for GTK, so which entry we set the min height to zero pixels. Uh, there are some themes um, where, 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 where the, the, the entries get somehow big for some reason. So I, I found this setting needs to be set sometimes. Yeah. So that it's just the required height. And then uh, we have uh, an error entry, um, which uh, a worn entry and a green entry. And for this, we set the background color the color, so the green entry is everything is okay, so this is just the green, um, and the, 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 the color of the font is black, and we also set the border radius so that we have rounded edges, uh, just a visual thing. And uh, for then we have a yellow, um, warning is yellow, and then we have an error which is red. Yeah. Okay, and so how to set this? So first we need of course to, to somehow load the CSS and parse it. Uh, for GTK, uh, and uh, so let's um, set up CSS, set up entry CSS, let's call it like that. And this is also, we need uh, yeah, we, blah, blah, blah. Um, we give it an entry, the entry we want to, to apply these things to it. And uh, so, yeah, why this is this hash green entry, this is the widget name. Uh, so if you set the widget name, then it will get this color theme. Um, that's how GTK does the things. An entry and uh, yeah, set up entry CSS uh, entry. So first thing is um, this only works if the widget is is not sensitive. We have already done that in the Glade file, but just let's do it now again. Then there needs to be some kind of uh, a CSS provider, is it called in GTK. So this is CSS provider new. Um, and then CSS provider load from data. And then we give it the provider and the CSS. So the pro we create the provider and then we load this CSS into this provider. And then we have it available for, for things. And then to be able to set it, um, there is this widget, uh, this style context, and we need to apply uh, or add the provider. So a widget style context, there could be more content or, or, or CSS providers for a widget, and they are added somehow, and they have a priority. So we need to add this to the widgets. So we need to get the, the, the widget style context, the widget style, uh, uh, get widget, get style context for this entry. 
and then style context add provider context for this provider and then we have to give it a priority and I think 600 about this is some of the standard priorities. Um, I don't remember if, if lower is higher priority or higher is higher priority. Anyway, so um, this is how to set up the entry and then all you have to do is, uh, so, so we need to set up this entry of course. So after we have loaded the entry, let's quickly set it up. So set up this con entry. And from now on, this should be able to, to use the, the CSS. Then we'll, let's export this set connected. And also we now want to switch the color. So, and this is with this widget, we, we need to set the name, widget set name uh, for the widget entry. You no, know, uh, this MW connection GUI, this is the entry. And we set the name to uh, the green entry on connected. So to this value, right? And the same we do for the disconnected and we set it to the worn entry so that we have a yellow. And compiles, okay, very good. And now we need to call simply call that from the event processor, but not simply call it because now we have the thing with the threads. And if you don't care about threading with GTK, you will end up burned in hell. So uh, we have this GTK bindings, um, well, duplicate. And this is now where we use this GTK HS, which provides some functionality for threading. Yeah, and that's exactly what we want. So uh, uh, you can also set the, 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 the GUI thread if you have one. And the thing is we want to post GUI async. So uh, this is in IO. Uh, and we are in I.O. in the event processor, so this is good. The thing is, um, what this does is uh, this, uh, this queues, queue an action to be run in the GTK event loop. So the GTK event loop is, is the, the main loop of which GTK is running, it pulls events and then processes them. So what this post GUI async does, you give it some action which it should do, it queues that in the queue and then in the other thread, in the main thread, and then executes it. So um, uh, that's what we do, yeah? So we, we just use this post GUI async. So let's go back to, um, to our event processor. And in this case, post GUI async, and we want to call MV set connected for the main window. And uh, as we are connected, the event, is, the event is connected, we want to set this true. Uh, we could even also, no, no, it's not really. Anyway, yeah, that's that's okay. Yeah. And for the um, uh, disconnected, we want to set it to, to false. And now we need to import this thing. Of course, post G is data G GTK threading. Uh, let's just copy that and import it. And compiles. All good, no warnings. Fine, so let's test this. Uh, let's just stack run. Oh, and I see we forgot something, so this will not run. <laughs> Again, and we get an exception or an assertion or something like that. Yes. And the thing is, of course, as I already told you, don't, you must not forget to create the resources first before compiling. Uh, we could add, we could set up a custom build and call this automatically, but it's not that necessary. We don't change the user interface that often. And uh, the C file, the generated C file is also checked in. So I don't want to add some more complication. And we have the user interface and you see a yellow button disconnected and we see could not connect reconnecting. Okay, so let's make this window uh, stay on top. 
and now we change here and let's just um, cut out this data tm dump signal net cut and now when the when the when the processing connects we should get a disk uh, 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 connected here and we're green and we are connected cool so this works and if we now again uh, drop the connection we get disconnected again open the connection we get the connection again and this is how we then can update the user interface so very happy with that that works it compiles without warnings um yeah let's conclude for this video here and yeah thanks for watching